I'm sure you've heard the narrative on the internet before. If you get a Game Boy player for your GameCube and don't get that little $100 disc to go along with it, you've got yourself a paperweight. But in today's modern era of retro gaming, you can take that $100 disc and throw it right out the window. Let me show you how to use the Game Boy player with your own GameCube for the total cost of $0.00. And zero cents. For this to work, you will need a modded GameCube. But since that's what we do on this channel, we'll take a look at that in just a minute. To be able to run the GameCube player without the disc, we're going to download a piece of software called Game Boy Interface. It's hosted on the GB Forever Wiki and linked for you in the video description. From the section of the page called Information, click on the link that says Download Main Package to download the file to your computer. The file is in compressed zip format and needs to be extracted. Right click, pick Extract All, and extract the file inside your downloads folder. Then delete the zip file in order to eliminate clutter. You'll need a means to copy this information over to something your GameCube can use. In this case, I'm going to be using a standard SD card and an SD card adapter that's compatible with the GameCube's memory card slots. If you need one of these, I have it linked for you in the video description. Regardless of whether you have other applications already installed on your GameCube SD card, or this is the first time, you'll need a folder called Apps. In this case, I'm just going to drag the Apps folder from the Game Boy Interface folder in the Downloads folder directly onto the root of the SD card. This will merge the two app folders together. Now you can close out all of the instances of File Explorer, remove the SD card from your computer and insert it into the SD card to memory slot adapter, insert your game of choice into the Game Boy Player, power on your GameCube, and launch Swiss using the exploit method of your choice. Watching that cool animated boot up sequence just never gets old. Once you're inside Swiss, navigate to the Apps folder. What you'll find is that there are three different folders related to Game Boy Interface. One's called GBI, or just the main Game Boy Interface software. The second one is called Game Boy Interface High Fidelity, and the third one is called Game Boy Interface Speedrun. The High Fidelity version is meant for use with upscalers or HDMI converters like the Carby, which is what I'm using here. The Speedrun version reduces latency or lag so that players looking to get the best possible times out of their GameCube games can utilize this feature. Since I'm using the Carby adapter for 480p digital output from the GameCube, I'm going to use the high fidelity version of the software. To launch the version of the Game Boy interface software that you want to use, locate the .dol file that represents the version of the software you need. In this case, I'll be launching the version that's compatible with the Carby adapter. Let's take a look at the three different types of games you can play on the Game Boy Player. The original Game Boy DMG, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance. This is a game for the Game Boy DMG called Fido's Magic Tiles. It's available at the Forever8Bit.com website linked in the video description. One of the great things about the Game Boy Player and the Game Boy Interface software is that it has colorized this game even though it was made in the original DMG color palette. The Game Boy Interface software is also well known for creating a higher degree of visual clarity and a brighter color palette than the original Nintendo offering. For example, here's that same game running from the original disc for the Game Boy Player. Take note of the significantly muted vibrancy of the colors here. Ouch! Hey, if you're seeing value in this content, make sure you subscribe while you're here. Here's a Game Boy Color game running on the Game Boy Player with the Game Boy Interface software. This is my new video game, Raven's Core. It's also available at Forever8Bit.com. As this game is largely based in outer space, take a look at the logo reveal for the color differences. Here's the Forever 8-bit logo when revealed in the Game Boy Interface software. The FAB logo, along with the planet Earth and text boxes in the introduction, really pop. Now take a look at those same two elements when they're run through the Game Boy Player software. As soon as you get to the introduction of the game, everything gets completely muted and almost a bit washed out looking. Here's a Game Boy Advance game I have a physical copy for, Super Mario Advance. When using the Game Boy Interface software, just like the other Game Boy based games, the color just pops right off the screen. You know, the whole point of using the Game Boy Player is that it's an actual Game Boy Advance inside that Game Boy Player dock for the GameCube. It's one of the most authentic ways that you can play Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy games on the big screen. Having this degree of big screen fidelity for these games just makes it a wonderful gameplay experience. You know, especially when you compare it to this, from the original Game Boy Player disc for the Game Boy Player. And here's a great bonus tip about the Game Boy Interface software. You don't have to use the default settings it comes with. You can set things up the way that suits you best for your own game playing experience. By launching the standard version of the GBI software, you can select the customized options that suit your needs. For example, you can change the aspect ratio for how games are displayed, change the video format, change the video mode, and you might want to consider changing this setting from interlace to progressive scan if your display and or upscaler support it. 
You can turn on video oversampling if you want it, change your polling rate or how often data is sampled and sent to your CPU, turn on the rumble feature, select a turbo button, select a border by number choice, select the type of filtering you want, select the color matrix you'd like to use for the display, make changes to decoding gamma, which is about the picture luminance, make changes to encoding gamma, same thing, it's about gamma correction, set the contrast level, make changes to the volume level, and select the type of sound output that best matches your system setup. It's almost hard to believe that Nintendo would put out this product with the software in this state and that the homebrew community could produce a product that wiped the floor with their behinds. But you know what? The homebrew community always does. And it's because of their efforts to create products like the Game Boy Interface software that you can not only skip that $100 disc, you can play your Game Boy games on the big screen in one of the best ways ever designed, original hardware. If you need a way to run Swiss on your GameCube, check out this video here shown on screen and linked in the video description and pinned comment. I'll see you over there.